Hey guys. So I wanted to do this as a follow-up video on the video from, I think, 12 days ago. I was going to be exact. And it was about the gopher that was killing my avocado tree. So basically on that video, I was showing different ways to keep gophers out of your plants. And during the filming of that video, I noticed that my avocado tree was wilting and I had to shut the camera off to go check, came back, and yes, there was a gopher that was eating on the avocado tree. So that video quickly became a video about trapping and killing gophers. And I did give ample warning for anyone who was uh, a lover of rodents to not watch anymore. And I did only get one comment that was, you know, negative toward killing rodents. So that was good. But I did get so many comments from a lot of you that were just offering words of encouragement and support or letting me know, you know, your gopher experiences. A um, lot of comments on potential solutions to my issues. And then there were also plenty of you asking if I had caught the gopher. Unfortunately, no, I did not ever catch the gopher. I think he had done his damage and moved on. What I do want to talk about in this video, though, is um, what happened, what I did or tried to do, uh, what happened with the, that whole avocado tree issue, and then what I'm planning on trying and doing throughout the rest of the property. So first though, I have a list here of some things that you guys listed as possible solutions. And then I wanna let you know why they might work here or why they might not work here. So uh, a very popular one was a dog, a terrier, a dachshund, um, several different breeds that you guys had mentioned. Well, Boomer's a terrier, obviously not the right kind because he's 100% useless outside. Um, well, he's 100% useless inside too, except for, you know, being cute and therapeutic for us. But even if I had the right breed, I think I would be more concerned of the dog digging and tearing up the garden just as much as the gophers are. So that probably won't be a good solution for me. Um, another solution was cats. And some of you had mentioned cats and maybe didn't know that we had gotten a couple of barn cats recently. And then there were some of you who did know that and were asking about an update. And it has been a while, maybe since I updated you. Um, the barn cats are doing great. They, you know, Mufasa was released early accidentally, but he stuck around and then we released Lucifer. However, I have to say his name has been changed. Um, he was not a very nice kitty when he was here captive, but that all changed once we released him. He, um, I mean, he's not like, you know, sitting in my lap, but he is a cute cat. He's, he's not, not hissed at me anymore. Uh, he doesn't attack us when we walk by. He's the first one that shows up for food every single night. They both do. They're both waiting, you know, outside the sliding glass door, like tapping their watches. And the great thing is, which I wasn't sure how it would happen because they did not come from the same place, is they are great friends. They, you know, cuddle together at night, sleep together, um, and they're here. And they're, I, I don't know how much they're doing for gophers yet. We'll see that still. I haven't found, I know some of you said your cats left you gopher presents on the front porch every day. We have not had that yet. The squirrel population, though, has diminished significantly around here. So we'll see if that continues. We'll see if the rabbit population and I don't think they're eating them. I mean, it might be some, but they can't eat that many. But I think just them being here on the premises has scared those away. So anyway, Lucifer's new name is Scar. So we have Mufasa and Scar sticking with the Lion King theme. Uh, he does have a little scar on his face, so it works out. And he, you know, he was kind of, he's more standoffish, let's say. I don't think he's mean. But anyway, he's not Lucifer material. Okay, now for some um, other options that you guys had given. So one was mothballs, putting mothballs in the hole. One was juicy fruit gum, putting juicy fruit gum in the hole, um, hot pepper flakes. And while all of those may work in certain scenarios, um, I don't think they would work here because it would take a lot of all of those things to make any kind of dent in the situation. The extent of what we have here is just too much for, any, we'd have to have you know stock in all of those type of companies. Let me take a minute before we move on to other solutions you guys gave, and I wanted to show you just the extent that we're talking about here. So we don't have a huge problem on the opposite side of the house. So where the vegetable garden is, um, and even the front yard 
where the English garden is going to be, where we had the pumpkin patch. We did have the one, um, but that's kind of the thing over there, um, all of that area. You'll see one pop up every once in a while, a little hill here, a little hole there. But over here where the uh, avocado tree was or is, if you take a look at the ground, you can see there are holes probably every foot apart. And we're talking this entire area. So right outside our gate here, across the little street, there's a bank here that this gets all pretty in, this, in the winter. It's greening up, if you can see it. But on this bank, there are gopher holes all over the entire thing. Holes, mounds. So that's not good at all. On the other side of our fence, outside, which I'm not gonna walk over there right now, but there uh, is another bank that goes downhill uh, alongside the, the road. It has been eaten up so much by gopher activity that last year when it rained during the winter, it completely opened up this huge chasm uh, through just eroding right through all of their tunnels. And I mean, it's huge. Like you could drive a car off into it. So it's not just the fact that they are ruining my plants. They, they are dangerous to property. If they undermine like my chicken coop, or any other structure that we've built around here, it can cause major problems. So as you can see, there'd be a lot of holes to put these items down to make any kind of difference whatsoever. A few of you mentioned putting some um, owl boxes up in some of the trees here, and that is definitely something I'm planning to do um, because they are natural predators of gophers. We have, we have a lot of hawks around here. We have seen a hawk dive bomb a gopher mound and pull the gopher right out of it here. I can't tell you how happy a day that was. It was like the best show ever. So I'm gonna let you know some of the things I am trying. Owl boxes would be one of them. Um, I got a couple of things on Amazon that you recommended and it got good reviews on Amazon. Number one are these stakes. They're solar powered. You put them in the ground and they vibrate every so often. And so the idea is that gophers don't like to be in an area where people or animals are kind of trampling overhead. And so this, I guess, fools them into thinking that. So I'm gonna give them a try, why not? Another thing was these gas bombs that you put into the hole, light it, I guess, and it gasses them out, supposedly. We will see. If that happens, I'll do a video when I do these um, just to give them a try and see if they work. I am staying away from poisons because, why, I, well, I'm looking, I'm not, I haven't ruled them out because I have heard that there are poisons and I'm looking into it. Well, it's a quick death. And second of all, um, it'd be very rare for a secondary poisoning because the animal would be dying under the ground and I don't really have any animals that will dig them up if they're deep under the ground. So I don't want to do that, but I'm not ruling it out. And I'm just being honest with you, but I would never do it if it was going to, you know, hurt an owl or, you know, some other kind of animal. But I'm gonna exhaust everything before that. So talking about the um, gopher baskets, which I had talked about, that's what the whole video last time was about. I had been looking into it because I mentioned about putting up, putting um, a better basket around the avocado tree, digging it up, putting a better basket around it. And I was looking into it and I kind of wondered because the, the chicken wire, you know, is not strong enough. It will rust in a couple of years. And so it's not the best solution long term. Now, the opposite of that is the hardware cloth, which can last up to 20 years. It's galvanized. All the joints are welded. So it lasts a long time. My concern, however, was the roots of something like an avocado tree not being able to get through that and it either stunting the tree's growth or killing the tree. And after looking further into it, um, yeah, that's what happens. One site said that you can put it down about 18 inches and gophers generally don't go under that. Well, what if they do? So I was thinking for some of the trees, like an avocado tree is putting the gopher wire down three feet. 
And on the bottom of that, so along the bottom of that entire area, putting down two layers of galvanized chicken wire slightly offset so the holes are overlapped so they're not as big as they would be. They're half the size of what they would be since so there's one on top of each other, um, slightly askew. And I'm gonna be making the diameter of that basket for these trees, like the avocado tree, about three feet wide or wider. So that way there's plenty of room for a while in that three foot or more diameter. Uh, and as the roots go down, they can get out through the chicken wire, expand that way. So that was my plan for the avocado tree. I ended up digging a huge trench around it. Fortunately, the gophers had made that work really easy since they softened the soil. I really wish you could train them. That would be great, but that's not going to happen. So I dug a huge hole all the way around the root ball of the avocado tree. I basically used the chicken wire that I had put around there back a year ago as kind of my guide. It ended up being four to five feet across, um, which will be great for replanting because I can make that huge basket. You call it a basket at that size? I don't know. I was able to find uh, a spot in the chicken wire basket that I had created a year ago that had bulged and pulled apart the, the seam. And sure enough, I was able to follow right through that seam, right through that hole and go right into the gopher tunnel that was in the root ball. Um, I thought I could still save it. And so what I was gonna do is undercut the entire root ball so I could just kind of pick it up, put the wire basket down in there, set it right back down in, and then refill it with soil water it heavily and cross my fingers. When I went to do that, I had to take the stake off because that was actually ripping apart the root ball. Uh, so I did that. And then I realized that the stake was pretty much all that was holding that avocado tree in there. Uh, it fell right out of the root ball. And I noticed at that point that the gopher had eaten almost everything. There was like two baby roots coming off of it. So unfortunately, I don't have a lot of hope for this avocado tree. Um, I cut off the rest of the branches, uh, the, major, the, the side branches, the lower branches, and planted it in a pot. And we'll see what happens. I cut off the, all the top growth um, because I, I don't want it to have to support that. I want it to focus on growing its roots. Now the good news is it's winter or it's coming into winter so we won't have hot you know, summer sun beating down on it. I'm putting it in morning sun, afternoon shade, and we'll just have to see what happens. And of course, I will keep you up to date on that. Now, there is one over the top solution that I'm trying in the cottage garden. And it wouldn't be me if I didn't do something over the top or should we say next level. So let's go up there and I wanna show you kind of my plan. And if this works, It'd be expensive, but it would be a game changer. And in my opinion, totally worth it as it would last 20 years. Let's go check it out. All right, so we're up here in the cottage garden. Now the cottage garden is surrounded by the exterior road or little tiny lane that goes by our house. It services four houses here, including ours. And then also the driveway that goes all the way around on the inside of our property. So it's kind of this island unto itself. And the entire time we've lived here, we've only seen one gopher hole or mound. And that happened to be the one that that hawk got. And since then, I haven't seen any gopher activity in this area. Now, they can easily go under the driveway. I think it's about 14 feet wide that's not gonna stop them. So we still need protection up here. And since this is a self-contained location, I thought this would be a good, a good spot to try this idea. And that is the idea of an underground gopher barrier that protects this entire island, if you will. So what that would involve is a trencher to dig a trench and a lot of gopher wire or a lot of hardware cloth. So the plan is I would dig a trench all the way around the exterior. Now, because there is um, a fence that goes behind the chicken coop, I, I wouldn't be able to get the trencher back there because the chicken coop goes right up to that fence. And so I would take the trencher and go right in uh, along the front of the chicken coop through the path that's gonna be along there. And I would use a three foot trencher because like I said, 
that's twice as deep as they advised that you know you you could protect a plant with a basket 18 inches so i thought well okay we'll go three feet deep uh, and there is, is a three foot trencher that i can get at lowe's a rental so to rent the trencher from lowe's for about 24 hours is between 200 and 300 dollars so um, and then the wire, enough to en encircle this entire area that's three feet deep, is uh, another $250 to $300. So for $600, maybe a little bit less, probably $600 with tax, uh, I would have this entire area, in theory, protected from gophers for 20 years. Because that's how long the gopher wire is supposed to last. I'm definitely going to try that. I'll do a video on it see me install it the thing with the, the the gopher barrier is it's supposed to be six to twelve it's supposed to be 12 inches on top of the ground and then 18 inches under the ground and then you're supposed to bend the wire uh outward at the bottom i guess that's so if they go up and hit the wire and then dig down they still get wire but i'm only going to leave a little bit sticking out the top because i can always add something onto that if needed I'm also going to make sure that part that's above the ground is coming up through gravel or through grass. So the grass might need a little help with taller wire. We'll see. Or I might even put a fence, a low fence, decorative of course, but also with a wire backing that will keep not only the gophers from hopping over the wire, but also keep the rabbits out. So I think that would serve two purposes. So I'm optimistic about that. Of course, I would be providing the free labor. Um, but if that works, I could certainly transfer that to a lot of other areas of our property. And even if one got in every so often and I had to, you know, use these other means to try to take care of it, um, you know, that wouldn't be such a bad thing. But to have to put a basket around every single plant that I put in here, or if I plant bulbs and have to worry about some of the, the more susceptible bulbs, having those protected all the time. I mean, that is just, that would get old really quick. So those are my thoughts and my solutions that I'm going to be trying here over the next months to years. And uh, I will keep you updated on everything because I know I'm not the only one out there dealing with this. So I hope you learned something. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.